Someone asked me about dating advice. They know that I talk about Terry, and they say, Bob, Bob Lane, how in the world do you get such an attractive, beautiful, effervescent, lively, good-hearted woman like Terry? Well, I can tell you how you do this. Uh -huh. First of all, you got to be a little choosy. If a woman's got a bitter heart or a guy's got a bitter heart, you know, they're angry all the time, they're yelling all the time, they, they look at everything as like the... Glass is mm. half empty, uh, negativity. They were hurt once, so they don't think anyone else can be trusted. You gotta stay away from those people. And you know what? Everyone's got flaws, dings and dents, but that is a problem. You wanna find someone that's not bitter, someone that's not got a broken, heavy, destructive heart, because they are not going to be able to love. It's a terrible thing to say, but if you're gonna find a good girlfriend or a good boyfriend, you gotta look for a good heart. If their heart is right, that helps a lot. Now, after that, you gotta look at other things, like with Terry, she has a wonderful life story. A wonderful life story. And you know what it is about? It's about growth. You know, she went through and got some college. Then she went and did some stuff. Then she got some more college because she realized she wanted to do something different. She uh, was a straight A student in high school, which and she has life experience in theater and music and stuff like that, which she's carried through the whole time. So life experience is important. Who do you want to be around? Do you want to be someone around that's artsy? You want to be a, someone around that's an intellectual? You want to be someone around that's athletic? You want to be someone around that's this, that, or the other, look at their life story, because that life story is going to tell you a lot. You always look at the physical. And as you get older, there's dents and things. You don't look exactly the way you did when you were 20 or 30 or 15 even. So you don't expect looks to stay there forever. There's going to be some dents and things. But what you do want to have is a spiritual connection with God. If you're a spiritual person in any way, shape, or form, don't compromise. If you're an atheist, you probably don't want someone that's spiritual, that prays and, and loves God. You know, to your lack of spiritualism, you probably want someone else that lacks that. Otherwise, you're always going to be offended or you're always going to feel like, oh, they're just superstitious or whatever the term you want to use, when really they've got a, a growth dimension within them that you'll never be able to connect with, and that sucks. So all my atheist friends, find Jesus. Get connected to spiritual stuff, man, it's awesome. But if you don't, I understand. You know, when you love God, you're always looking for the best in other people. You can pray, you can, you can endure a whole lot as a spiritual person that you can't if you're not spiritual. You give up too easy, you get bitter, you do all these other things rather than saying, you know what, God's providence is what it is. I'm gonna live my best for God. And uh, if that means I'm lifted up, great. If it means I'm pushed down, I'm pushed down. And there's a lot to that. I'm not, I'm making it over simple, but I'm telling you right now, a spiritual dimension in dating is absolutely necessary, in my opinion, to have a great long-term relationship. So let's recap. Number one, a good heart. Look for that. Number two, life story. Number three, spiritual. If, they are, if they're knocking those out, yeah, baby, way to go. <laughs> so anyways, don't get too physical until you're married. Because you can always be connected with people all the time, but once you use that physical dimension as well, uh -huh. of intercourse and, and having sex, then you got to worry about stuff that you don't have and, and really it wipes out other things. So be careful until you get married not to have sex, to focus on the relationship, the heart, the hope, all the things that can go on and learn to love that person the best you can every day. Make them your study. You study them. What do they like? What don't they like? What makes them crazy? What makes them happy? And what, what are their life goals? You know, people have hopes and dreams and goals. Help them get to it. Be an encouragement. Life is good that way. So anyways, subscribe, find someone to love. Obviously, I'm hoping you're already married and you got the perfect person. If they're not perfect for you, stick with it. You can do it. Love you guys. Ciao for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>